Let's go over the reflexive property. The reflexive property is simply a quantity is congruent to itself. Okay, how does that help us? Well, when we do proofs, this is a property that's gonna come up pretty often. And um, what's useful about it is when we're given our information, our given information, we might find that, you know, we have a side and a side, an angle and an angle, but we don't have enough to prove the triangle is congruent. A lot of times we do have enough information, it's just that it's not written as given, instead it shows up in the diagram. So let's take a look and we'll see how this works out. So let's say for example we have this diagram and we're asked to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DCB. So if we look at these triangles, we have A, B, C, and triangle D, C, B. You might notice here that there's an overlap. Both triangles have this side BC in it. And that's important because if they both have BC in it, then we right away know that one side is congruent because BC is going to be congruent to CB. So a good way to mock up our diagram is to put an X here so we know that this side is congruent to itself. And when we have our statements and reasons, we'll have our given information here, maybe some other um, steps that we come across. And what we'll write is that side BC is congruent to side CB. So this might be step four, who knows, because of the reflexive property. All right, uh, another type of diagram you might see this in. So this is done for that example, but just to make you more familiar, I might have something that looks like this. That's way off. And we have A, B, C, D. So if we're trying to prove these two triangles congruent, right away we know that BC, in this case, is congruent to CB, so we already have a side. 